Hey guys, this is Landon with the Command Deli, bringing you another Commander Preconstructed Deck Upgrade Guide. Thank you so much to GameGrid for sponsoring our channel, and if you're interested in checking out their new and improved store and supporting the channel while doing so, you can check out the link in the description below. We will have a copy and pasteable list that you can put right into their site and purchase the singles you need to upgrade your precon. Additionally, if you are interested in supporting the channel directly, you can head on over to patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. Thank you guys so much for joining me today on this upgrade video as I give you my tips and suggestions on updating your newly acquired or soon to be acquired Prismari Performance Preconstructed Commander deck. Now just a little walkthrough on what these preconstructed decks are. Once a year, Wizards of the Coast releases four to five brand new 100 card pre-constructed commander decks that are meant to be played out of the box. <clears throat> now these decks are meant to be played with the other pre-constructed decks that they are released alongside with, and they are balanced for those other decks. This means that they're not super powerful, they're on the lower end of the power scale I would say, as is accepted in EDH. So there are a lot of ways to improve these decks. These pre-constructed decks are also aimed at newer players or players that are new to Commander to help them kind of get a taste and a gist for what this format is about. It's kind of daunting to sit down at a table with a 100 card deck with three other people and it, there's a lot of stuff to keep track of. There's a lot that goes on and then even more so building your own 100 card deck is also very daunting. So these pre-cons really do fill a very important role. So with these pre-constructed decks, there are certainly ways that you can improve them, make them a little bit stronger. Maybe you can play with some of your friends' decks that are maybe a little bit more tuned, a little bit more optimized. So through this video, I'm going to be giving you my tips and suggestions for doing that. Additionally, my goal is to kind of help you get a little bit more familiar with the Spellslinger archetype, as is the theme in the Prismari Performance deck. Spellslinging is an archetype that revolves around casting a lot of instants and sorcery spells and having payoffs for casting instants and sorcery spells. So let's take a general look at this deck and kind of see what's going on with it. So there are two cards I would like to feature first, and that is the face commander Zephi Thunder Conductor and the other commander in the deck, Varen Voice of Duality. Now Zephi has Magecraft, which means whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, it is going to trigger his ability. So whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, you get to scry one. If that spell's converted mana cost was five or greater, you get to make a four red and blue elemental creature token. If that spell's mana value is 10 or greater, Zephi is going to deal 10 damage to an opponent chosen at random. So just looking at this card, you can kind of see what the spell slinger archetype is all about casting a lot of instants and sorceries and copying a lot of instants and sorceries in this game plan you are trying to put a couple pieces in play a couple key pieces and then have one huge storm turn that usually results in some type of combo that wins you the game now the other possible commander that is featured in this deck as i mentioned is varin voice of duality varin is an afrit wizard that costs one a red and a blue and also has magecraft and whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell varin is going to get plus one plus one in sound of turn additionally if you casting or copying an instant or sorcery spell causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger that ability triggers an additional time an example of a permanent caring about an instant or sorcery being cast or copied is the magecraft ability found on varin or zephi so with varin out every time you cast an instant or sorcery spell she's going to get plus two plus two because her ability will trigger twice or if you have Zephyr out, you will get whatever effect is relevant to the cmc or mana value that you cast and you get that twice I am of the personal opinion that Varen, Voice of Duality, is a much more potent and powerful commander for this deck than Zephi. I've even gone as far as to cut Zephi from the list entirely because I really feel like he has a lot of hoops to jump through and you don't get as much value as some of the other cards will provide you that are going into the deck. So the too long didn't read version of all of that is Varen, Voice of Duality is, I think, a stronger commander and it is the one I suggest you use to helm this deck. Now let's go over the cards that I am going to be cutting. I'm not going to go into too much depth as to why I'm cutting them from the deck. Overall, the cards that I'm cutting are either way over costed for what they do or don't really help with the strategy that this deck is trying to do, which is to say cast instants and sorceries and have cards that care about instants and sorceries being cast. So we're cutting Sly Instigator, Inferno Project, Zephy, Jaya Ballard the Planeswalker, Fiery Fall, Call the Skybreaker, Elemental Masterpiece, Apex of Power, Traumatic Visions, Living Lore, and Riona Fire Dancer. Now some of these spells are certainly super cool. Riona Fire Dancer is a super cool commander and I think that 
having a deck built around her ability of casting lots of instants and sorcerers and making lots of token copies, that's a deck in and of itself, and I don't feel like she offers that much in this deck. So that's one of the cards I will mention a little more reasoning why we're taking her out. Now let's move over into the cards that I'm going to be putting into this deck. And also keep in mind, I am trying to stick to a $20 budget. There are a slew of really powerful cards that fit right into this deck that are just a little bit too expensive. Like I said in the introduction to this video, I kind of wanted this deck to be dipping your toe into the water of the Spellslinger archetype. If you like this deck and you like the upgrades that are in this that you only spent $20 on and you're interested in taking this deck to the next level, I know that one of us here at the Command Valley is actually working on a fully tuned Varen list that is going to have all the goodies in it and you can look forward to that and maybe spend a little bit more money on that to get a more Spellslinger deck. So the first group of cards I'm going to be adding into this deck are ones that care about us casting or copying an essential sorcery spell, as our commander really wants us to be doing that. So I'll start off with Wind Rider Wizard. This is a common super cheap spell that came out in Zendikar Rising, and it is a human wizard with flying, it's a 2-2, and whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell or wizard spell, you can draw a card, and if you do, discard a card. So our deck is going to be casting lots of instants and sorceries, so every spell that we cast, we get to draw two cards and discard two cards. So that is really good card advantage. We then have Wavebreak Hippocamp, which is a horsefish, and it is a 2-2, and whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, we get to draw a card. This is a super no-brainer card in this deck. Red and blue often plays at instant speed and has usually lots of interaction, so being able to hold up our mana, hold our cards in our hand, and being able to cast spells during our opponent's turn to not only replace the card that we spent, that we cast, but getting another one into our hand, super great value. The next card is from the Strixhaven set, Archmage Emeritus. Has a mage craft ability. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, we draw a card. Kind of like Wavebreak Hippocamp, but much stronger because we can basically trigger his ability as many times as we have mana and spells to cast, and he actually gives us the spells we need. So as long as we have mana and we aren't just drawing lands, we can really chain things together with him. Super powerful spell. Really excited to use this card. The next card that I'm adding into this deck is a saga in the Mirari Conjecture. So this has three different abilities. So the first lore chapter, which will trigger when it enters a battlefield, lets you return target instant card from your graveyard to your hand. And now at the beginning of your next turn, you can return a sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. And then the final lore chapter, which will happen on the second turn after you play the Mirari Conjecture, is until the end of turn, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it and you can choose new targets for the copy. So this works very well with our commander. Not only does it return instant or sorcery spells from our graveyard that we've already expended, but on that third lore chapter, we get to double and double the spells that we cast until the end of the turn, which is super powerful. The next card that we're putting into the deck which represents half of the budget that I'm allotting for this upgrade is Thousand Year Storm. It is an enchantment that costs four, a blue, and a red, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it for each other instant and sorcery spell you've cast before at this turn. You may choose new targets for the copies. Now, this essentially gives your spells, your instant and sorceries, storm without explicitly giving them the ability storm, which is super cool because this is a permanent that triggers whenever we cast or copy an instant or sorcery. This is going to get out of hand very, very, very fast and can lead to some incredibly explosive turns. I think one of my favorite interactions with Thousand Year Storm in this deck is going to have to be, you have Thousand Year Storm, you have Varend in play, you know, maybe you cast a cantrip in Brainstorm or one of the other cantrips in the deck and your storm counts at two or three, you've cast some more cantrips, and then you cast Mana Geyser. You are going to add so much red mana to your mana pool that you could use for, you know, putting into an X spell that's in the deck or, you know, somehow closing out the game with all that mana. It's just some super wacky stuff can happen. The next permanent spell we're putting into this deck that cares about instants and sorceries is Double Vision. It's a five mana, three red red enchantment. And whenever you cast your first instance or sorcery spell each turn, you get to copy that spell. This works super well with our commander because the first spell we cast each turn is going to be copied twice, which can give us an insane amount of value. And the final permanent that I will be adding into the deck is Aria of Flame. I'm super excited about this one. This is an enchantment I've been waiting to find a really good home for for a while. 
and I think Varen is the perfect deck for it. When Arya Flame enters the battlefield, each opponent is going to gain 10 life, which is seemingly a very big downside. But if you continue reading, it says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you put a verse counter on Arya of Flame, then it will deal damage equal to the number of verse counters on it to target player or planeswalker. So there are two parts to Aria of Flame that trigger whenever you cast an Instant or Sorcery spell. The first trigger is putting a verse counter on Aria of Flame, and then the second part of the trigger is it dealing damage to target player or planeswalker equal to how many verse counters are on it. So to my understanding, how this would work with our commander in play is whenever we cast an Instant or Sorcery spell, we're going to be adding two verse counters to Aria of Flame, and then it will be dealing damage to each opponent twice. And then it will be dealing damage to target player or planeswalker two times which can honestly close out the game super fast. We're going to eat away that 10 life in a blink of an eye, and this is probably one of the better win cons in the deck. And now moving into just some instant spells I'm putting in the deck to kind of just round things out. Honestly, I feel like the instants and sorcery spells in this deck are already pretty strong and not quite where you want to be in the typical spell slinger deck. I, I think in the typical spell slinger deck, you would be wanting to see more cantrips, but I didn't want to like, take out 20 or 30 cards and put 20 or 30 cards in for a precon upgrade i feel like at that point it's just a deck tech and we're going to be releasing a deck tech for this commander specifically so i think just these three instant spells that we're putting in are going to be good enough just to give you a feel for how spells in your decks play so the first one is selendi vision which is a really cool mdfc that has a land on the back side and you get to look at the top six cards of your library and you can reveal an instant or sorcery card from among them and you put it into your hand three mana instant speed for this effect and being a land on the other side super nice we're then playing electro dominance which is an x red red spell and at instant speed you can deal x damage to any target you can then cast a spell with converted mana cost x or less from your hand without paying its mana cost so this is really cool in the deck it's going to give us two different magecraft triggers from our commander we can play sorceries at instant speed if we want to because electro dominus gets around timing restrictions which is super cool it can also serve as a win con if we can dump a bunch of mana into it we can well not necessarily a win con but we can take one player out it's just a really flexible card it can be whatever you need it could be you know opponent removal permanent removal if there's a really troublesome creature so i really like electro dominance and spell slinger decks and the final instant that i'm adding to the deck is reverberate it lets you copy target instant or sorcery spell for two mana, which it doesn't say yours, so you can copy one of your opponent's spells if you so choose. Being able to use Reverberate to cast white or black spells, or maybe even green spells that you wouldn't be able to cast in an Izzet deck, I think is super cool. And since I am taking a Planeswalker out of the deck, I thought it was fitting to put a Planeswalker back into the deck, and this so happens to be Rao Storm Conduit. He's a Planeswalker from War of the Spark, which means he has a really powerful static ability. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, Ral is going to deal one damage to target opponent or planeswalker. With our commander out, we're going to get two triggers off of that for every cast or copy. His plus two lets us scry one, while his minus two lets us copy the next instant or sorcery spell that we cast this turn. Now, one thing to note, if you are able to cast, let's say, a brainstorm, it's in the deck, and you hold priority and you cast a copy spell. Hold priority again, and you cast another copy spell targeting the original copy spell, what you're going to be left with is an infinite loop of spells copying each other, which will actually have Ral ping everybody to death. And with our commander out, Varen, it's going to happen a lot quicker. So Ral definitely includes a slot in this deck, especially when he's only $1.49. And with that, those are the 11 cards I'm putting into the deck and the 11 cards I'm taking out of the deck. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this pre-con upgrade episode. I hope that you are looking forward to the other pre-con upgrades that we will be releasing throughout this season of spoilers. And I hope you guys are super excited for Strixhaven as much as I am. I really love the idea of like the magic universities and it's super fun to be able to pick the university that you really feel like you identify with and just having a blast expressing yourself with those spells. If there are any cards that you feel like I should have taken out and cards that you feel like I should have put in, definitely let me know in the comment section below. Keep in mind, I was trying to stick around a $20 upgrade and I think I ended up around 24, which 
I could do better, I think, but I really wanted to include Thousand Year Storm. Thank you guys so much again, and a huge shout out to our patrons and our subscribers. You guys are awesome, and we really appreciate you, and we couldn't do this without you. A couple quick reminders here in the close that if you're interested in purchasing any of the cards that you've seen in this list or purchasing, you know, a whole deck, you can do so with the link in the description below going through GameGrid's website. And if you are interested in supporting us directly and becoming a patron, you can do so on heading over to patreon.com slash commandly to sign up today. You get access to merch, content, you get to hang out and talk with us, play games with us, and it's only honestly a ton of fun. We have a blast over on our Discord server. One more quick thank you guys, really appreciate you, and I hope you guys have a wonderful week.